Hello brothers and sisters of Christ. I got my old sweater on, it's kind of faded. But uh, I've been doing some work around the house and uh, tell a little funny story before we get into this real quick uh, testimony. Um, power drills. I have a, two panels on my house that go into the crawl space underneath the house and they put a latch on there that was more for an indoor latch for cabinets and doors and stuff like that. And I guess it didn't survive, so the metal rusted and broke on the latch. So I had to buy another latch to go on there. So it was a different style latch, but not to go too much into it. I got the panel down there, and underneath that panel is where I've got my rat traps. I've got the power plug-in, because there's no power plug-ins outside the house. It's just one cord that comes from underneath the house. Um, on, the, on the back side where the garden is. And uh, so I have to get under there every day, every other day. So I make it, I made a latch, I got it down there. I was in a hurry, I put the latch on. I got so excited because I've had to put up with that thing being loose and not really going all the way on uh, for months. And I finally got around to fixing it, yay! So I screw the, la the new latch on. It's just a pin that goes up and latches. And then the pin that comes down, up, latch. It's one of those latches. And I got it on there and I was excited. Yay, I got it on there. And the next day I went back out there to open the panel up and realized that those screws were a little bit too long. And I had screwed that latch, actually screwed that panel into the wood part of the house where that panel wouldn't come off. So I was out there planting some plants this afternoon and I was fixing that. So I walked back in, uh, God put on my heart that Let's get this out there, this little testimony and encouragement to the brethren, okay? I know I titled this Pride and Ego of People That Hate God's Word, okay? The King James Bible is God's perfect written word for English-speaking people. And before we get into the testimony, we're going to go through some scriptures because the Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. One of the verses we're going to be going over is how this is the engrafted word that's able to save your soul. Okay, capital W word, lowercase w word. You have the spoken word through God himself, Jesus Christ, and you have the written word, or the word spoken through men of God. And we're going to talk about that. So turn to 2nd, if you have your King James Bibles, turn to 2 Thessalonians 2.7. Got into this with uh, somebody recently trying to talk to him about dispensational teaching, which he's not a dispensationalist, uh, and he's post I think he's pretty much post-trib. Uh, he's not pre-trib. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7. But there's something important in here we've got to read. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7. Right. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The body of Christ he has to be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. The Antichrist. The time of Jacob's trouble. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all the deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Now understand, this is going into the time of Jacob's trouble, after the body of Christ is left. But there's instruction in righteousness here, which is why it's in 2 Thessalonians to help warn us. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. The love of the truth, not a truth, not someone's truth, not truths plural, the truth. Okay. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we but we are bound to give thanks always to God, to you, brethren, beloved of, of, of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. There you see it again. The truth. The plan of salvation for today was set up from the foundation of the world. I don't have to get into it too much because it's all about, you know, God's grace is what saves us, but how we find God's grace. Okay? I don't want to get into that part, but the poor I'm pointing out just for this short message and testimony is the truth. 
14, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. The truth, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Right. What happened to me today? I took Victoria to town for my trip to town, and we did uh, stopped in a few places, got some more plants for the garden. I got did a little grocery shopping. Um, uh, like I said, sometimes I still get a loaf of bread and um, a block of cheese. Uh, and today was a farmer's market day, so I went to the grocery store. So I made my, my uh, trip to town. But the first thing we do when we get to town is I go to a, some spots where I can walk along the, the beach. But there's this one spot where I can do a hiking trail where I parked. It's the visitor center in Brookings, Oregon. It's um, actually not in Brookings, Oregon. It's a little bit south of Brookings, Oregon, there's a visitor center, and you park there, and there's a place you can walk where all the trees, it's like you're in the woods, the trees all around you, there's just a short spot where it just looks like you're just lost in the woods, and you get to hike, and I talk with the Lord when I hike, sometimes I pull out my cue cards, uh, my memory verses, and talk with the Lord about the Word of God, and sometimes I'll walk and pray and talk about the Lord, and His Word, and talk about the world and the things, you know, make your request be known unto God about wisdom, about things that vex me with what's going on around me in the world, and and, and just praying and asking God for, for strength, you know, and to help me stay on that straight and narrow. So I'm walking, and you go through this, it looks like you're in the forest area, and then there's a little path that goes out to a river. And then there's a path that goes out and goes up and around, and then it finally connects back to the beach itself, the ocean, and then I can walk a little strip of the ocean, and then I come back to the car. And before, what I always do when I go to that place is I pull in with the truck. I get out of the truck, and I walk into the visitor center, and I drop off. I still have these. Brother in Christ helped me make these uh, gospel tracks. So I drop off these gospel tracks, okay? Heaven on one side, hell on the other. Okay? Are you, it says, time is running out, are you ready? For the wages of sin is death. But on this side it says, but, where it says heaven, it says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay? I drop gospel tracts off. Uh, on my truck, I have gospel magnets. I'll put some pictures up here of uh, gospel magnets that I have on my car. So I got Victoria out. We started our walk. We're walking around, and I'm talking with the Lord. We made it all the way back around. Uh, it's about an hour hike. Got all the way back to and as I, to the truck, and as I'm walking up to the truck, I see a little girl that's probably eight or nine, and she's pointing at one of my magnets that's on the on the truck, and she points at it, and then turns and looks at her dad and goes, and then smiles, and she's giving a thumbs down, and then I was like, something's weird about that. I don't I don't get what's going on, Lord. She, Evidently, that gospel magic, that a magnet that talked about the King James Bible being the, you know, the lion, the, the, the king of books, you know, the word of God, something about it that little girl didn't like. I didn't get what was going on at the time. I was like, Lord, that was weird, but it's, it's a shame that she'd have that attitude. Right? So I get in the truck, I get home, I get some work done, I make some, a late lunch three o'clock lunch and I get out there and as I'm walking by the truck I see a little paper folded and pushed in like a little gap in, one, in the truck somewhere above one of the magnets it was I think it was above the one that says if you were to die tonight do you know where you would go or would you go to heaven or would you go to hell I can't remember I got the magnet out there where would you go and this was put in there. And I, I thought it's something that got stuck in the car as I was driving some trash. So I grabbed it and pulled it out and was about to throw it away and it, fold, it folds open. So I open it up and this is what it says in here. The man, the daughter's father, saw those magnets and was very offended by those magnets. Those messages that I have on my truck. And he put this in there, and look what he said. Talk about the pride, and the ego, and the arrogance 
this, we call it self-righteous, but there's no such thing as self-righteousness, okay? You go about to establish your own righteousness, but you will fail every time. Brothers and Christ, you know what I'm talking about. But he put on here, it said, I'd rather go to hell than participate in your silly little book club. I guess he thought I was that magnet was that I was in all these books. No, the magnet was the lion that's authorized version, the King James Bible, tearing up all the Bible perversions, the satanic Bibles out there. And he didn't get it, but he listened to this. He actually took time to write out, I mean, if that stuff he's like, okay, that's if he looked at that magnet stuff and said, that's just garbage, you walk away. Okay, but he didn't do that. He had to actually take time to write this out, fold it up, put it in a little nook, and hope I come across it. And by God's grace, I did. Okay, I'd rather go to hell than participate in your city little book club. Well, if you reject Jesus Christ of the King James Bible, the true plan of salvation that comes from God's perfect written word, Okay, they go hand in hand. You reject the capital W word, you reject the lowercase w word. You reject the lowercase w word, you reject the capital W word. Okay. Now, this is twofold. I am, God blessed me with, with, with one realization. Now, I was going to do it at the end, but I'll do it now. I'm sad that that person looked at that and that's all I got out of it. No, you're part of some book club that's satanic and wicked, and I'd rather go to hell. I'd just rather go to hell. And what I feel, what I believe happened was, is he was writing that, and he was mocking those signs, and like most children do, they want to please their parents. She was going along with it. He was indoctrinating his daughter to hate the Word of God. To think it's, cool, it's better to go to hell than to accept God's Word. That's why she gave that thumbs up or thumbs down and, and gave that smirk. She was trying to please her dad, who was mocking God's word. What does the Bible say if you offend one of these little ones who believe in me? Okay, children are raised with an inheritance, uh, are born innocent. Okay, uh, They are born, I believe, you know, they're born with the love of God. They've got to be talked out of it. They have to have parents that are atheists. They have to have parents that hate the Lord, that hate His Word, that are worldly, to really mess that child up. Okay? That's why the Bible says we're to raise our children, brother, sister, Christ, in the admonition of the Lord. Okay? I didn't say that the, the, the child's going to be born believing in Jesus, the name Jesus, but I believe we're born with inherent belief that there's a God. There's a God out there. You gotta be talked out of it. You gotta really be messed up. Okay. That being said, uh, the grace that God gave me for the testimony, brother says Christ, he read it. He read those signs. I I had them on there and there for a while, brother Christ. I was like, is is he even reading them? If, or not him, but is people reading them? Is, is it doing any good? Is me leaving gospel tracts places doing any good, Lord? I have brethren out there that have gotten so burnt out that they've got bad attitudes about gospel tracting. They, people just rip them up and throw them away. It's a waste of money and everything. It's like, I'm here to encourage you, brothers and Christ. People are reading them. Okay? Please keep handing out gospel tracts. Keep laying gospel tracts. It's better to hand them out than just lay them out. Because then you know you can get a few words in edgewise as you're handing them out, planting seeds, telling them about Jesus, tell them about hell. Hey, hell is real. You really need to read this gospel track when you got time. Because most of the time, you always make sure you give them the gospel track first before you start talking to them about heaven and hell and Jesus Christ. Because they might cut off the conversation real quick and get out of there. But they forget that they have that gospel track that you handed them. And there might be enough conviction on their heart that they'll open it up and start reading some of it, or all of it. Praise the Lord. Okay. People are watching, reading the magnets that I have on my truck. Okay. I wish I had a chance to talk to them, but I couldn't. I, I didn't know what was going on at the time. Okay. But John 14, 6, it says, Believe not the truth. When we read that in 2 Thessalonians 2, 7, Believe not the truth, the truth. 
John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Why do I say capital W word and lowercase w word go hand in hand? You can't believe in Jesus and say, I don't believe in God's perfect written word. I don't believe in his word. I got into it with somebody that says, oh, you can, someone can just preach the gospel without using the Bible. And I'm like, where do you get the gospel from? If it's spoken, it still comes from God's word. Whether it's written down or it's spoken, it's still God's word that's being preached. Capital W word or lowercase w word. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. James 1, 21. Now understand, James, 21, James is to the 12 tribes for the time of Jacob's trouble. But it says here, James 1, 21, instruction and righteousness. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Okay? Some things carry over from dispensation to dispensation. One thing that's always carried over in all dispensations is the word of God. The Bible says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And three of the four Gospels. Uh, in Psalms it talks about uh, how he has magnified his word above his name. Right. God's word is very important. And that man's attitude towards it was if he had, like he had a hardened heart. Right. I wish I could have talked to him. I wish he would have mocked that stuff while I was in front of me. I was at a distance and I missed all the mocking. All I saw was the daughter giving a thumbs down and, and smiling. And as I walked to my truck, they took off down the path heading to the beach. I wish I'd been there so I could have said something. I don't know if my words would have reached him, but I wish I could have said something. Okay. Um, 1 Thessalonians 2.13 Real quick, when I talk about the capital W word and the lowercase w word, you have the capital W word, Jesus Christ, who is God fully and completely. When he speaks, it's God speaking through him. It's the word of God being spoken through Jesus Christ. Okay. Then you have the lowercase w word that can be the written word, or it can be God's word being spoken through man. Okay, uh, Prophets, it can be spoken through... Um, Apostles, men of God, okay? And people say, well, see, that's men of God. That's not Jesus, therefore it's not as important. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Okay? I come across professing Christians that have the same attitude as that man. They don't say, I'd rather go to hell, but they have the same attitude to that man. They'd rather go to hell than submit themselves to this book. The gospel that's in this book, the Jesus Christ that's in this book, the truth that's in this book, King James Bible. They'd rather go to hell. I've talked to Bible perversionists. I've talked to atheists. I've talked to professing Christians. I call them professing because they're not saved. They don't know the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. They're confused. They, I mean, they're clueless. You start getting them back to the gospel, the true plan of salvation, something's always wrong. This is the truth. You start talking to them about the Bible version issue. You start proving to them. I've got books up there to show proof that this is, you know, as uh, I use them as um, visual aids to show that, you know, backed by over 99 the King James Bible from the Texas Receptus that's backed up by over 99% of all Greek extant manuscripts. All the others, Bible perversions, less than 2%. Or no, I'm sorry, less than 1%. Okay. It's just, there's evidence out there, but there's faith that's required. If this, you want this book to work in you, you got to believe in it. You want to be like that man that said, I would rather go to hell than participate in your silly little book club. Okay. I, don't, I honestly don't see a difference between this man who flat out rejects Jesus Christ 
and the Bible perversionists who flat out reject Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. Reject His Word. Okay? There's no difference. Galatians 2.14 we read, But when I saw that they walked not upright according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, not as do the Jews, why compelst thou the Jews to live as do the Jews? Notice what it said there, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. The truth. Now one thing is, I don't want to go off too much on a rabbit trail, but there's still brethren out there in their pride and their egos and their love of culture and heritage. They mess that whole passage up and destroy that passage and just try to deceive the brethren. You know what that passage is talking about? It's talking about culture. It's talking about salvation. The true plan of salvation. The gospel. What's going on in Galatians? I'm just going to sum it up because we've talked about this using scripture. After, I have my Bible on the computer up here. i got the Bible here. Uh, scripture after scripture. We've gone over it in other studies. Paul is preaching the true plan of salvation to the Gentiles. Okay, at Galatia. And what's he's having? He's got problems with the Jews coming in and trying to grab him and bring him back under the law. And he used Peter as an excuse uh, or an example of it happening in Jerusalem. Because that's where Peter is preaching to the Jews. He showed how Peter fell for the same thing. Where he was getting pulled back under the law. Now, you remember the verses in here where it talks about how you're not to fellowship with the lost world? What was Peter doing? He was, break, he was withdrawing himself from the circumcised to hang out with the un, I mean, I'm sorry, the uncircumcised. He was withdrawing himself from the uncircumcised to hang out with the circumcision. Because you're not allowed to fellowship with the lost world. And the Jews, under the Levitical laws, you cannot fellowship with someone who's not circumcised. Once again, that whole passage when Paul's telling the story, what he's saying is if somebody, Paul or Peter, gave in to peer pressure and started withdrawing himself and acting like those Gentiles were lost because they weren't circumcised. I'm sorry you're a little agitated, but I'm just, I know brethren that falsely try to bring in their sin for a season, their worldly culture and heritage, and try to take this verse, pervert it to justify their sin for a season. To justify their covetousness, which is idolatry. Their idols in their life. Okay. This is talking about salvation. Peter was treating those Gentiles as if they were lost when the Jews, the saved Jews were around. That were circumcised. And that's why he says, why do you compel, if thou being a Jew, livest after the manner of the Gentiles. He's preaching to the Gentiles. He's telling the Gentiles, you don't have to be circumcised. You don't have to keep the holy days, Sabbath days, new moon, touch not, taste not, eat not, ordinances, and whatnot. He's hanging out with the Gentiles and saying you don't have to be under the Levitical law. How livest after the matter of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews? Why compelst thou the Gentiles to live as the Jews? When the Jews come around, he withdraws himself like, you guys need to get circumcised so I can fellowship with you. You need to keep the Levitical laws of, you know, the laws of Moses so I can fellowship with you. He starts withdrawing himself. What is he doing? He's perverting the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're not under the law. But Peter started falling for that. But sorry to go off on that rabbit trail, but some brethren really get that screwed up because they're trying to insert worldliness and trying to justify their sin and worldliness. Okay? This is my heritage. When I got born again, I am now adopted in to the body of Christ. I am now adopted into the Jewish people. I'm now are we the sons of God. This tells me how I'm supposed to live. The do's and the don'ts. This does. My worldly, my worldly Gentile heritage, don't need it. Gone. I'm doing this. Okay. This. I'm telling you right now, you get so stuck in your worldly Gentile heritage and culture and everything, you're going to find that a lot of it goes against this or tries to pull you away from this. 
I've seen it, brothers, says Christ. Don't fall for it. Sorry for the rabbit trail, but it says there, according to the truth of the gospel, when we read this book is the way, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, capital W word, the written word of God, sanctify him through thy truth, thy word is truth. Uh, the grafted word that's able to save your soul. Notice that word is lowercase w when we read it in James 1.21. What are we supposed to do with these people that want nothing to do with the Bible? First of all, what do we do with people who pervert the, 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 the gospel and pervert the scriptures and want not, truly don't have a love of the truth? Galatians 2.5 says, To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with us. The truth of the gospel, which is found in the Word of God. Today, in English, King James Bible. Some people just can't handle that. Ephesians 1.13 says, In whom we also trusted, at that ye have heard the word of truth. The word of truth. The gospel of your salvation, whom after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. How do we know we're sealed? The word of God. How do you get saved? Through the word of God. Capital W, Word of God, lowercase w, Word of God. Both. Right. This man, hard heart to this book. Mm -hmm. Colossians 1.5, For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the words of the truth of the gospel. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. The truth of the gospel. Where do you find the truth? How do we know about Jesus Christ? How do we know about the true plan of salvation? How do we know we're sealed into the day of redemption? And we're not to take it as men's words, we're supposed to take it as God's word. This man can't bring himself to drop his pride and his love of unrighteousness, who has pleasure in unrighteousness, worldliness. Nothing in this world is, is so important to prevent you, that prevent it's worth going to hell. I'd rather go to hell. I mean, the pride it took to write this and put it on the truck. Romans 12, 18. This is my bigger book that I'm doing some more highlighting in. This wasn't meant to be a study. It was just meant to encourage you that there are people reading our magnets, our Bible uh, uh, magnets that you have on the car, stickers, bumper stickers, uh, gospel tracts that you're laying out there. Don't let anybody try to discourage you saying it's just a waste of money and a waste of time. It isn't. There are people reading it. The, one, the thing that breaks my heart is I still pray to God that face to face, face to face, I'd love to lead someone to Christ. It'd be nice to meet someone who's never heard of Jesus Christ. It really would. But everybody I come across has heard of a Jesus Christ, and we have to work twice as hard to show them who the real Jesus Christ is. Okay? It's one thing that you don't know who Jesus is at all, so you don't have this preconceived idea, false ideas, False Jesus is in your head. If you don't know who Jesus is, it's a lot easier to reach someone for Jesus Christ, that the truth, than it is to reach someone who's got all these false ideas of who Jesus is, lies, deception, and you're having to break through all that with the truth. Romans 12, 18. Now, brother says Christ, I wish I could talk to him. The other, the other encouragement I want to give you is the reason I wish I could talk to him is this um, when they see your, how you talk to them, with meekness, okay, with true love, with earnestness, with courage, I'm standing on, with you know authority. But don't mistake an authority for pride. Some brethren have it's not authority that they're they're not speaking with courage and authority. They're starting to get prideful themselves. They're rewarding pride with pride. Be careful about that. Romans twelve eighteen. If it be possible, as much as liveth in you, lieth in you, 
live peaceably with all men. Sometimes you can't, but you're the one that's supposed to try. Okay? I've, I, I've always told this story. I've got a guy up here, that, one of my neighbors, that he's yelled at me, he's cussed me out, he's spit in my face, he's like I'm his worst enemy one minute, then I'm an okay person to talk to the second, and he, he just seems to have these mood swings. Now I could, when he does that, when he loses it, he just starts yelling at me to the point where it just spits flying as he's yelling, and, and there's one time he was just mocking God and everything, you, because of Christmas, that's what Christmas is all about, mocking God. Um, I know it's going to upset some people, but that's the truth. He was mocking Christmas, and mocking the God of Christmas, which, yeah, the God of Christmas is false. It's not the God of the King James Bible. Okay? And I tried sitting there, and I tried talking to him. But he still thinks all Christians are Catholic. doesn't matter who you are. If, you're, if you claim to be a Christian, you use the word brother or sister in Christ, body of Christ, born again, it just... All that stuff, he's, his mind has been so perverted by lies and deception. And what's happened to him in his life, his heart has been hardened. Right? But to be possible, with light, live peace be among all men. That includes saved. Lost and saved. Okay? There's some brethren out there that they just have hate and bitterness and egos and pride against other brethren. Uh, you, need, you need to check your heart. You need to check your walk with your Lord, your relationship with the Lord. It ain't right. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. This man that wrote this, now what I mean by the Lord will deal with him is, is I've planted a seed with those signs. A seed has been planted. Remember what, what uh, Paul said? I have planted, Apollos has watered, but God gives the increase. In the end, we leave it up to the Lord, and the Lord will deal with it. Okay. Verse 20, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. I didn't get a chance to talk to that person, but brothers of Christ, my encouragement to you, it's hard sometimes, but best thing you can do for the Lord and to be a good ambassador for Jesus Christ and to really plant good seeds is you don't lose your temper. Okay. We don't treat the lost world the way they treat us. Okay. If they're very prideful towards you, don't respond with pride. If you think that'd be simple, but you don't get all snarky and prideful back. Mouthing off, name calling, mocking. You don't get prideful back. Okay? You're not planting good seeds that way. Right? All you're doing is losing your testimony with that person. Right? You don't reward pride for pride. You don't reward bitterness for bitterness. That man had bitterness to write this. You don't re reward bitterness, with, and that includes saved sinners. When you have a disagreement with a brother or sister in Christ, you don't, re you don't reward pride with pride. Okay? You don't reward bitterness with bitterness. You don't reward hate for hate. You don't reward error with error. Okay? It's just that simple. It's not always easy, because there's some times that I really want to get into them. There's people I love very much that are so hard-hearted. I just want to grab them and shake them and see if maybe I can shake whatever is... Like they got a screw loose. Let's get that screw loose out of the way or something that's blocking them from listening. They're not listening. But we can't be like that. We can't. Okay. 2 Timothy 2, verse 2. 2 Timothy 2, verse 2. I'm sorry, 2 Timothy 2, 24. That's right. And the servant of our Lord must not strive. We're not supposed to be fighting. We're not supposed to be mocking, name-calling, right? mouthing off. Right? We're not supposed to strive, not supposed to be debating, okay? uh, arguing, 
Okay. That one, is, if it gets into a little bit of an argument, like a disagreement, and you're talking about it, you're the be the judge that that argument gets to the point where it goes from an argument to a debate. You definitely need to stop, take a breather, take a walk. Okay. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men. No, 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 that's just brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't have to be gentle to the lost world. It says here, but, must, but be gentle unto all men. How many of you know preachers out there that aren't gentle towards all men? You can preach truth. You can have that courage, that strength, that authority as you're preaching. Okay, but how many times do you come across men that are striving? They're starting to lose it. They're more preaching out of anger, not love. Not with authority, but out of bitterness. Okay? Be careful about that. It says, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach. I'm telling you right now that if you start out by putting people down, calling people names, mocking people, and you start out just being... Evil, like rewarding evil with evil, uh, people are going to shut down and they're not going to want to listen. Especially if they're the people that really need to hear the message. I've come across brethren that have really good messages and they ruin it for some people out there that desperately need to hear that message because they start out or halfway through, they start mocking them, they start calling them names, they start putting them down. They're, not, they're, they're starting to strive with them. They're causing conflict. Just standing for the truth will cause conflict, but they're purposely going out of their way to cause conflict. But be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. That's when I need prayer on, brother says Christ. Patience. Okay. Here's the main verse I want to put, 25. In meekness, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. This man opposes himself. And I always pray to the Lord that when I sit there and talk to him, he could have gotten mad. I've, I've had some training. The Lord's trained me with some of my, the, the neighbor I talked about that spits in your face trying to keep your calm and not get angry and not start losing it. But in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. I wish I could have talked to this guy. And I pray that the Lord would have given me meekness in the process of doing it. And no matter what he said, that I don't set a bad example for being an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. The same thing goes for brothers and sisters in Christ. When you're trying to talk to someone that you believe is in error, and I've failed this sometimes, you don't go into it, and you don't go into it, I'm 100% right. Well, you believe you're right. You don't go into it that you're just 100% wrong, and, and if you don't believe what I believe, then be gone. You're worthless. You're not worth my time. Go somewhere else. That's not meekness. That's pride. That's bitterness. That's not meekness. You can be 100% right and you can still sit there and say, hey, let's talk about this. Let's go through the scriptures. Someone can come to you and say you're 100% wrong when you're not, and you still talk to them with, you respond with meekness. Okay. Gentle and gentleness. Okay. Charity. I'm willing to let him just totally... He can put me down, and he can backbite, he can whisper and whatnot, and he can tear me down, and I'm just going to sit here. I'm not going to respond the same way he's doing. I'll take it. I'll take those, those accusations. I'll take the whips. I'm not going to respond the way he's acting me. Brother and sister Christ, this goes for save too. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. You've got to be meek. Listen, brother, I really need to talk to you about this. Okay, let's say you're on a phone, phone call. If I got a phone call from someone, I'm a lot different than I am when I was newly saved, but praise the Lord. He's helped me grow as a Christian and grow in this world, uh, living for Him every day. But someone calls you up and says, Brother, I really got to talk to you about something that, that's really been on my heart, and it's something I think that we really need to talk about something I disagree with you about. Or you call somebody up, listen, you're wrong, man, and, and you just you need to get it right, or you need to quit, or you're just worthless, and I'm going to break fellowship with you. Gonna... Which one do you think he's going to listen to? 
I'd be like, I'm t even now, if someone did that to me, I'd be like, absolutely. And meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God prevents will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Whether it's salvation, or they're in error. A brother and sister in Christ that's in error. Okay. I try my best to have meekness. Okay. Sometimes I fail. So I'm trying to warn you as a testimony. I failed. Don't fail, brothers and Christ. And when you do, peradventure will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth. Acknowledge the truth of your failure. Repent and get back to walking with the Lord and try not to make the same mistake again. And that, the, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Right? The lost world. Going back to the lost world. Taken captive by him at his will. If they're not saved, they can be used by Satan. Now don't get me wrong, the, God can use the lost world too. Remember Nebuchadnezzar, my servant Nebuchadnezzar? But for the most part, the lowercase g God of this world, taken captive by him at his will. But remember, the lowercase g God of this world has to answer the capital G God of all. My Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay. Remember, remember meekness. I wish I could have talked to this man, okay? You hand out a gospel tract, be meek about it. Be gentle. Don't be a jerk. I don't know if that's bad to use the word jerk, okay? But don't be prideful. Don't have an ego, okay? Don't start being uh, bitter, how dare they say bad things about my book? How dare they say bad things about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? It's wrong for them to do that. But we need to talk to them and try to reach them. You keep, but don't, I'm not saying you back off. You stand, stand, stand for God's perfect written word. That's what I said. I didn't get a chance to talk to him. I would have stood for this book, God's word. I would have stood for my Lord and Savior to the very end. When the conversation ends and he takes off. Which is normally how it ends. You stand firm to the truth. You stand firm to Jesus Christ. But you don't start acting like the lost world does. You don't do that. Okay? And meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Matthew 5.44 reads, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Okay, that man... I can already tell right now that man had a bad attitude towards me because of this book. God's perfect written word. Persecution. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray for this man. I'm not going to pray that something bad happens to him. I'm not going to say, Lord, this man deserves to go to hell. Send him to hell. I'm not praying that either. I want to pray that God keeps planting seeds and watering the seeds that are planted. And that someday this man would get saved. Come to the knowledge of the truth. That's what I'm going to pray for. Luke 6.28 says, Bless them that curse you and pray for them that despitefully use you. I've had men, uh, neighbors curse me. Okay? I pray for them. God, open their eyes. Help me to be a living testimony of who you truly are and not this false religious junk that's out there. Help me, O Lord. Matthew 10, 14 says, And whosoever shall be not receive you, nor hear your words. Okay. Remember what the Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Be ready to give an answer. Or 2 Timothy 2, 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Your actions, how you live your life. Living for the Lord, you're supposed to be a light to the world. This dark, dark world. Jesus is supposed to shine through you. But it'll never happen if you're not taking God's perfect written word and hiding it in your heart and living it. And whosoever will not receive you, nor hear your words. If this guy, if I got a chance to talk to him, like I talked to some of my neighbors, I get the chance to talk to him, 
And if he was to tell me off, blah, 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 and tell me off, spit in my face, kick dirt on my feet, and walk onto the beach with his daughter, who ought hear your words when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Lord, I planted a seed. Shake off the dust of your feet and you move on. You might come across that, if I come across that person again, God reminds me, because I'm bad with memory, because I only got to see his face once for a short period. If I see this guy and recognize him again, God might give me a chance to water the seed that those magnets planted. And I might get to talk to him again. But once again, you know, don't be discouraged when men go their own way. When they reject absolute truth. Did you plant a seed? Did you do the best you can? There's times where I would say, well, I could have said this, I could have said that. Learn from it and try to grow from it so you can do better next time. But don't be, beat, be beating yourself up too much. You said something for the Lord. You stood up for the Lord and His Word. Praise the Lord for that strength and that courage. Okay? Once again, Brother and Sister Christ, I didn't mean for this to be that long, but a testimony of what happened to me today. Okay? The, the sad thing is, is the man didn't get saved. The man didn't look at it and go, oh, that's interesting. He didn't even have the attitude that that's interesting. Maybe I should look into that a little bit more. He had the attitude of hate and disdain. I'll read this again. I'd rather go to hell than participate in your silly little book club. Brother says Christ, that is it's discouraging, but the joy is, is that he read it. The reading the signs that I have on my truck. If you have signs in your truck and you've got magnet uh, stickers, uh, if you're handing out gospel tracts, you're laying out gospel tracts, they are reading it. We're holding them accountable, Brother and Sister Christ. We're planting seeds. Someone else comes along and waters. At that point, it's up to God. We give it to God to give the increase. Mm -hmm. Keep at it, Brother and Sister Christ. Don't give up in these last days. Okay. Don't get so into the fear-mongering about what's going on out in the world and getting into the fear-mongering of um, prepping. Oh, we got to prep, we got to prep, we got to prep for seven years, we got to prep for seven years. Uh, I don't have to prep for seven years. Man. Yes, I do have enough food to last me for a year normally, but that's how we're supposed to live. We're supposed to have food for a season. Okay? The harvest season, I always talk about this, the harvest season. There's the harvest, you get all the food, you can food, you jar food. Nowadays you can freeze food. And that food still lasts you all year. Okay? I'm growing food, I'm learning how to hunt. I'm still learning how to hunt, but I'm fishing. Okay, I do fishing um, to get meat. I'm not saying you don't work. The Bible says if you don't work, neither shall you eat. I'm not saying you can't have food for like up to a year, but I'm just telling you, I don't need seven years worth of food. I do not need to endure to the end to be caught up. Christians down through the years have always gone through tough times. Always, always have gone through tough times. Harder times than what we're going through now. We haven't seen nothing compared to Christians of the, I say Christians, as the Bible calls them Christians, but as brothers and sisters in Christ, saints, church of God in the past. Okay? We haven't seen the hard times that they've seen. And they weren't all about prepping, prepping. we got to prep for seven years. we got to prep for seven years. Okay? We're not supposed to be prepping for seven years. We're supposed to be continuing to preach the gospel. Sinners to repentance. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to lead sinners to repentance. And belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. We're trying to lead people to Christ. And be a light to the world. Also does the same thing. How you live your life. Okay. I love my brothers and sisters of Christ. Action. Love my brothers and sisters of Christ. The email. Uh, uh, prayer and testimonies. At uh, uh, 2018 I think it is. I'll put it down in the comment section. But. Um, the email for the ministry, prayer and testimonies, 2018 at outlook.com. Things what it is. 
Uh, it's still there, Brother Sister Christ. If you need someone to talk to, if you need help with something, let me know. If I'm able to help, I'm here to help. In these last days, we need to be coming together. Okay? Not being torn apart. Okay. We need to come together, and we need to line up with this, and we need to give up our idolatry. We need to give up our worldliness. We need to give up the fear-mongering. We're not given a spirit of fear, but of peace and love and a sound mind. Okay. We need to be preaching to people that men like this. We need to keep standing out for people like this, that desperately need Jesus Christ, that desperately need salvation. Okay. How many brothers is Christ out there that when you were lost, you might have made a statement like this when you were lost? And now that you're saved, you look back and go, I can't believe I ever made a comment like that. That's why I'd love to see this man accomplished, get saved and have that same attitude. Oh, Lord, forgive me. I can't believe I ever said that. Can't do it if we don't keep fighting the good fight and touching on the prepping thing and getting lost in the world and what's going on in the world. The Bible says to be a good soldier for Jesus Christ, we're not to entangle ourselves with the affairs of this life who have chosen him to be a soldier. We can call out sin for sin, call out wickedness for wickedness, and then we get back to the Word of God and living for the Lord. Get back to preaching the Gospel. Get back to preaching absolute truth. We don't get entangled with what's going on in the world. The world is always going to be going contrary to this book and to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We fight it by being a light to the world, living for the Lord every day. Right? So grace and peace, grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. They are reading the, <laughs> the gospel tracts. They are reading the signs that you put on your trucks and vehicles and magnets. They are reading them, brother and sister Christ. Get back out there. Keep it up. Keep it up. Praise the Lord. I will see you in the next video.